<clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's hot. Um. Okay, cool. And if we go to epidemic. Interesting that I'm not seeing the live chat though. Oh, it's just hella delayed. What the fuck? Okay, so there is a short delay. That's not too bad. Maybe sixty. Uh-uh. 
let's add some music for that we need to Music some cable D. Save. Discord. Which is on C. The game itself. You take it back! <laughs> but financial advisors are just one part of this. If you are lucky... Of it, but you should also know they can be a gold mine. You should also know they can be a gold mine. You should. Oop, the echo is already. Also know. My bad. Okay, cool. I'm not quite done yet. Sweet. Oh shit, yeah, I'm also gonna have to set up my uh Squid Screw Marina thingy. One watching that oh, ask me. This is Let's pause.
edit video. Wait, what the fuck is that? Too? Has someone else liked this? I appreciate it. Uh, it's just wish this service company. Sort and while out. it's not unreasonable for them to get paid for providing a service, there can be a lot of different fees. There are legal fees, trustee fees, transactional fees, stewardship fees, bookkeeping fees, finders fees, and the list goes on and on. I honestly wouldn't be surprised um, if they also had an elf spotting fee, sure. but Hi. remember, thanks to your new certification, you no longer have to pay it. <laughs> Go spot some Shit. elves. And, and look, seemingly world. tiny fees can really mount up, thanks to something called compound interest. Now, whenever Get retirement tea. companies like Prudential mention that, it's always as a positive that if you start with a really small investment, by the time you're ready to retire, it will have substantially grown. It's hard to imagine how something so small can help with something so big. But if you start putting that toward your retirement every week and let it grow over time for 20 to 30 years, that retirement challenge might not seem so big after all. Holy shit! Ah, uh, here we go. The I game ties to I knew you were so really hard. That might be the most upsetting commercial involving dominoes that doesn't involve the phrase Cali Chicken Bacon Ranch. <laughs> but, but compound interest works both ways, meaning while your money add up, adds up, your fees can really add up too. Assume you're invested in a fund that is earning a gross annual return of 7%. They charge you a 2% annual fee. Over they charge you years, a 2% annual fee. Your net of 5%, the red line, and what you would have made without fees, the green line, is staggering. You've lost almost hey, two-thirds of perfect. what you would have had. Two-thirds <laughs> of what you would have had is gone. So think of fees like termites. They're tiny, they're barely noticeable, and they can eat away your f***ing future. <laughs> and one place where your 401k can be full of termites is the funds themselves. Generally speaking, you can choose between low-fee index funds, which basically just try to match the average returns of the stock market, or, for a higher fee, you can get an actively managed fund with experts who will pick and choose stocks for you, trying to beat the market. And companies that sell active funds really believe in themselves. Uh, At MFS Investment Management, we believe yeah. active okay. management can protect capital long-term. Active management can take calculated risks. Active management can seek to outperform because active investment management isn't reactive, it's active. Okay, that's not so much a coherent commercial as it is a drinking game where you do a shot every time he says the word active. <laughs> but the problem with active management is that even many Wall Street experts find it difficult to consistently beat the market. And there is sometimes embarrassing evidence of this, like when a group Perfect. of professionals oh, were pitted in a stock picking challenge against a cat named Orlando. <laughs> Orlando's method, he throws a toy mouse at a group of I remember this, this scientific. is hilarious. Last year, Orlando's picks returned nearly 11%, while the pros he gained just 3.5%. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Let's all agree that the Wolf of Wall Street would have been way better starring that cat. <laughs> Of course, of course, you know, instead of drugs, there's a plot hole, because instead of drugs, his downfall would come when someone busts out a laser pointer in a meeting. <laughs> but that cat wasn't a complete anomaly. There is growing evidence that, over the long term, most managed funds do no better and often do worse than the market. It's basically the plot of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. If you stick around doing nothing while everyone around you f***s up, you're going to win big. <laughs> and the thing is, this is not a secret. Even some of the people charging those fees know that this is the reality. Oops. One of the ultimate dirty secrets of the fund industry is that a lot of people who run other fund companies um, own index funds <laughs> in their in their own accounts and don't talk about it um, unless you put a couple beers in them wow sometimes i invest in index funds might be the least interesting secret anyone has ever divulged <laughs> while drunk it's right up there with my favorite movie is the constant gardener 
and one time in college I got totally wasted and read the entire Wikipedia page for rope. <laughs> so... So... So don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. So... So between financial advisors, high fees and underperforming active management, the entire retirement plan industry is a potential mind... This now works, so I'm just going to watch TV because I feel like... I was still pretty fucking good at outplaying still myself, though. Still pretty fucking good. Hide the swords actually. This is <laughs> he had a rat rig. I don't know how Lou finds so much stuff Bitcoin, there. Baby. Just like he found graphics card, Bitcoin, literally everything under the bloody sun, basically. Yeah, this is why I got the yellow. Unbelievable. <laughs> My guy. I've only gone and fucking done it. Oh my god, this guy has a hex screw on? What? Later, nerds! Later, nerds! Later, nerds! Alright. Uh, let's get to Poor Ologev. One thing that takes a while to figure out in labs is the spawns. I've been caught out a few times at these offices, but if you're lucky, you can get a GPU or Lennox here, which explains why it can be highly contested at times. Oh yeah, I got the keys as well. if he didn't know what to do. Uh, maybe he's scared of heights. I don't know. Having a clue. Maybe it's just a little bit of an AI rework needed. Maybe it's a little bit of a bug. Maybe that's his weakness. Like, was the old, you know, killer leg meta? Or he used to freeze and lock. He Guys, hello, welcome back. Uh, I'm finally back with episode 10 of Talk and Talk Of. Now, most of you guys know that the, the podcast from the is hosted across on Spotify. Uh, an anchor uh, and a host of other places as well where you can listen to it um i've had a bit of a, a break from it recently because of you know yes you know, you know, I, I was i was unwell i've had some uh, underlying health conditions that i needed to get a grip on very and sucks hope he's okay well. so, uh, my wife took ill so <clears throat> it's been a tough time um and it's been challenging but uh things things are heading okay. the right way uh, uh, very very positive on. and it's time to get back on the horse 
it's time to get the podcast recorded again it's time to get them put out there that's so um, funny after oh, he came back as well he started talking to some mad big people um i've covered it in the podcast as i said the links will be down below it's now start diversifying uh, the content uh, after following a lot of conversations online and a lot of very very informative videos by creators uh, within the Tarkov community uh, and some that are further afield as well. So from going forwards, they're going to be shortened. They're going to be um, kind of compressed. You'll find them here on YouTube as well in a video format and you'll find them across on Spotify as well. What I would like, uh, if you do like this kind of content, then drop a like, drop a subscribe. If we can hit 100 is too subscribers low. on YouTube, I'll be absolutely stoked because that'll give us the ability to have you know, our custom URL and get rid of all of that nonsense in the top. Uh, so, yeah, let's jump into it and see where we go. What's been happening? Episode 10, the community's kind of evolved in the past couple of weeks. You, you know, if you follow it on Twitter or, you, or you're staying up to date with it, you'll, you, you'll see that... Um, it's kind of it's kind of moved it it, it um, it's starting to grow i certainly feel back towards what the original concept was it went through this this growth period where it was um people shitting on each other uh, and people criticizing each other, for on each other how they played the game or how they did things or, or how they approached yeah. it and it really i agree with body on this one quite quick it gets so uh, what's been great to see is that some of the uh some of the more how can I put it? Elder statesmen and stateswomen uh, of the community kind of made a stand uh, and they came out and they said, you know what? Like, completely screw what other people think about you and what you're doing. Just get on and enjoy the game yourself in whichever way you want and ignore these people. What I've seen the past couple of weeks is, is that a lot of people have related this change um, to finally getting fed up with the influx of players that came from Fortnite and Call of Duty not my words, when the game blew up with Twitch drops. So it's it's interesting. I'd love to know what other people think about it. I'd love for people to come on uh, and we can do an interview style and get their opinions. I have reached out to a lot of people. I do understand that my reach and my uh, my capture... Um, I'm so glad that Bordy got good. the people to interview that he did. That's so cool. smaller broadcaster, which is fine. Um, but... If there's anybody out there that wants to come on and wants to get involved, the door is always open. I can't stress that enough. I can't stress that enough. So <clears throat> it's been good. It's been good to see that, for me, it's been good to see that people have started to get fed up with this toxic behavior and they've made a stand against it. Uh, and it's kind of, it's cemented uh, a lot of the community together uh, who, who agree with that. What it's also done is it's, it's slightly isolated the kind of the stupidity that you can see on reddit sometimes uh, and again that's good to see um so yeah move on <clears throat> that's the community evolution in my eyes you might have a different view on it i want to hear about it if you do what's been happening recently in the community we've had events uh we had the shoreline bosses um rishala was on there wasn't he with um sanator they were up at resort making a complete mischief of themselves uh and it was popular it was good and um, we've we've now moved and progressed into the the loot kind of area where it's it's kind of if I'm getting the feeling that it might be the first iteration of dynamic loot uh, and other things have been happening as well. Killer and uh, Rishola have had the spawn rate Rishola. up to uh, I read somewhere forty percent and thirty six percent respectively. Um, Rishola, this week, no. uh, the past two weeks, sorry, I've been following the community and there's been some updates um, from. The, you know really good content creators uh, and a community broadcast what um, bit, little bits and pieces that i've picked up from that i'm going to cover uh in this episode of the podcast so 12 12 um lighthouse is coming soon it's literally around the corner we're going to get inertia we're going to get voip and we're going to get nvidia dlss in this patch as well yeah, what does uh, that mean? they did say in one of the community podcasts i can't remember which one but they did say it's getting tested on the ets very soon uh, and that there's also going to be a lighthouse reveal coming soon uh, inertia is going to be added obviously the community are quite hyped about this because a lot a lot of them are fed up of the ad uh point fire quick peek scan you know and, and flick kills and then the clips getting put on reddit to show how skillful people are um so that's that that's a positive change 
I love how salty people are about the whole like will it change it culture going on Reddit and posting stuff. I think it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> good players will always be good players. And these good players will always find ways of working with the, the skills they have and how the game presents itself to get the very best out of it. Oh, so don't expect to completely, you know, if you're an average player, don't expect to completely think, suddenly think, you know, oh, I'm competitive and I'm going to PvP and wipe the lobby. That's not going to happen. There, there's always going to be good players. There's always going to be somebody that's better than somebody else. And that, it's always going to be me in your lobby, boys. And as it progresses and as inertia is brought in, <sighs> we'll see in videos and we'll see in streams and broadcasts on Twitch and YouTube and wherever else, we'll see skillful players develop a play style to, to counteract the inertia. Uh, and it'll represent, it'll still, it'll still produce some form of meta, but we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the AD spam, I think, you know, for me, I'm a boomer. You know, I'm over 40 year old. I haven't got the reflex. I'm just jealous of these kids. That's all it is. I'm just jealous, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with it. Um, Currently, they said that the PMC speed is too fast. That players are exceeding Olympic sprinters over longer distances. Um, so that's in kind of like the sprinting and the maximum uh, stamina and strength aspect. Maybe there's going to be a soft skills workaround. Who knows? Maybe at, at a point, uh, the developers will look into that. Historically, I think Nikita and his team have always said they want to keep the game playable and not a complete uh, IRL representation. Uh, so I think messing around with it too much and pushing it to you know further towards that mill sim kind of area will cost it, it will cost them players because you know not everybody's into that. I think though, in my own opinion, I think and I certainly feel at the minute that the devs are starting to head more towards the the creation of the game that they wanted, um, and they're starting they're not starting to care less. But they're starting to to come out with statements like it's going to change there will be changes people will have to adapt or people will have to go elsewhere and they're starting i think they went through the growth period when the game took off where they tried to accommodate a lot of people and for me that was reflected when things were changed in the game and there was a lot of complaints about it and then changes were reverted and it felt like they wanted to hold on to a you know a player base that was new uh, and embracing it and positive about it so they went through that and now i think they've they've kind of evolved themselves with the vision of the game and they're moving back towards the this is what we want this is how it's going to be and if you don't like it we're sorry you can go and i think that's great i think that's great for some of the old players who were here you know in the alpha who know what it was like and who have suffered far 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 longer than i have um, with with the issues in the game, who've experienced more and more and more changes, uh, you know. Personally, I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm very very excited. Oh, bollocks! Right. Uh, go check. Being my bloody keys. My guy, I know you are. Oh, what the fuck? Oh. <laughs> How did I not hear him walking out that door? Yeah, we'll play tonight, next one. <sighs> right, that was horrifically bad. But... I can now put my labs keys in. Where are my last keys? Put this on. Um, I need Aquamari. I think I already have it, right? ...about the future of the game and its development and how it's going to be uh, upon full release. I still maintain the opinion that what we're playing now is absolutely miles away 
from how it will be come full release but you know as with everything we'll have to wait and see and again if you've got a different opinion i'd love to hear it give me a shout and come on and we can do a video conference and we can chat about these things this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to promote some positive interaction with other people in the community where we can have healthy discussions and we can talk about our love of, our, of the game and our frustrations with the game uh, and i'd certainly welcome that um so inertia voip is also coming uh it has been said that you know voip despite it coming to 12 12 that there's going to be restrictions on it and i don't know how or i don't really understand how it's going to be they've explained monitored. this now it was kind of like an, an insummation that it would be reviewed in real time and that people abusing it or being complete like idiots with it could be dealt with in real time and that there's nikita had said before that you know he wouldn't tolerate the system being abused and he wouldn't tolerate it being um kind of used for negative purposes and that people could be banned um if they mess around with it i'm pretty sure that the dev team don't want the voip abusing a lot of people are hyped for it and a lot of people are not i'm kind of like in the middle at the minute i'm 50 50 with it and i'm gonna have to wait and see how it plays out same as everything change is great you know i i welcome That's it great. it's certainly just something less like you dump a mile in like a million you can run uh... from you can build on but i'm going to have to wait the interesting thing it, it could be dealt with in real time was interesting so if if, it, if it's going to be monitored real time Jeez, and you've right. got access to it and they're going to ban players for being complete idiots and messing around with the system that's really really interesting and i will welcome that if the screaming you know sexist and racist obscenities down the microphone or if they're playing music and messing around with voice stuff dlss so nvidia dropped we, we've got reflex we just had a patch there were some issues with fps and frames um recently and they were saying it was caused by uh, nvidia reflex we've just had a patch that sorted that i've had no end of issues recently um on the pc not just with tarkov but with every every game i just want to let you go as not you guys know that it was the latest nvidia driver that was causing it for me um and what i did was um uninstalled it and just went back and did a clean install i don't know if something had getting corrupted uh, but it, it caused a whole load of issues for me tabbing out and locking the computer up you know switching between screens uh, between discord uh, and create a dashboard and things like that whilst i was streaming or whilst i was playing a game it was it was a bit of a nightmare so i uninstalled the latest driver that we just had and i reinstalled it the clean install again and it seems to sort that up so hopefully if you guys are having some issues with that uh, i hope that helps you out there's still a bug on blacked limbs in the game uh, apparently they're aware of it that the fact that it mitigates damage uh, and they're working on resolving the bug there wasn't really much right. information given uh, further than that uh, but that they're aware oh, yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. i was wondering why i didn't have any money uh, you know it's not game breaking it's just it's just one of those things you just got to get on with it um there was talk of again a post raid death cam now i'm not sure how this could be implemented or what um restrictions and limitations it would have on you know uh resource at the minute um it, it, there was a feeling when i watched one of the podcasts this week that it was doubtful it would happen maybe in the future there could be a kind of like an arena style mode that the players could review at a later date but there wasn't really any great conversation on it and there wasn't much given away by nikita um he did confirm though that i picked up in a snippet that secure containers will never be lootable so that's that's pretty good because we at the end of the last wipe we had the event with the um the lockable containers gone the secure containers were gone and we That's also so had funny, a dude, everyone freaked the fuck about out. containers being broken into so as a community we were all quite like oh this could be cool like you could have a tool that you you know you can hack into someone's mm. little container and you can get stuff out of it and the other half of the community were like this is awful because this is my this is my safety this is my haven even if i get killed and i've got an expensive item you know i've got some money so i can trade it and i can stay sustainable and i can get back into raids so it was kind of it, it it was met with mixed emotions at the end of the last wipe so yeah i've picked up that he did confirm that secure loot lo secure containers will never be lootable um nice. the loot outrage in the community recently also um the dynamic loot that the they started to talk about the first iteration of it uh they've said in re response to that that loot hotspots were predictable and as such the moving of the loot in its current stage it's hoped that it'll change the game the gameplay 
the flow of the game and that it will promote different parts of the maps where players can encounter each other uh, and have a new dynamic to fights. Now, I can tell you that playing offline, I've encountered more mid to long range fights in different areas on shoreline and customs uh, and interchange than I've ever, ever, ever had before. And I enjoy it. And the reason I enjoy it is because in dorms, CQB for me has always been, or it's always felt a roll of the RNG dice. You know, you've got, we've, we know we've got issues in the game. We've got other factors such as server performance and desync and lag and things like that. So that's why it's always felt like it's a roll of the dice. I do feel that over mid to longer distance, this is somewhat mitigated. And I've certainly enjoyed the fights where I've been behind a rock and someone's been behind hardcover and it's been about trying to think about positions to take up on the map, how to flank and how to get away if there's if there's more than one and I've been fighting on my own and find new places to fight from. So I've really, really enjoyed it. Again, <clears throat> I understand that people may not have enjoyed that and that's what's so great about the game. You know, we all like different things about it. So yeah, that's um that's that's been the whole purpose of it. It's been moved around to change the gameplay and promote different parts of the maps where we may encounter different PMCs and we can uh, we can fight. Going forwards, the loot hotspots apparently will cycle and they'll change around the map. So this is great. Uh, and this is a, a personal opinion. This certainly isn't an opinion of, of anybody else's. This is my own. This is great for me because I want to explore and I want to find things and I want to discover things in Tarkov. That's what I love so much about it. What I don't like, and I've recently muted quite a bit on my feed, I don't want people to data mine it and share it with me. Now, I'm aware they do, and with respect to them, that's their choice. That's fine. I'm aware that that may be popular with a lot of people in the community who do want to know. But for me, I don't. So I think it's great that the loot spots will cycle around the map. What I don't think is that great is that if that information can be got at and shared en masse, it's not really going to change anything about the game. And it's not going to bring that element of surprise or discovery to it. Um, on the plus, on the other side of that, you know, if, if I find somewhere, you know, will we see people sharing it? Or will we, or will they keep it to themselves? I mean, there's a lot of, you know, lot of people stream talk of. Uh, there's a lot of people, you know, play it as well and create content even though they don't stream. So... Will they keep it? You know, is there own treasure chest? Will they? Will they not share it? Will they avoid it when they're streaming? I don't know. Oh, fuck! We're going to go in. Please tell me I've got my keys. No, I didn't. Fuck! Oh, right. Changed around the map, so it will never be the same place. I would imagine that that will be a particular area for a certain amount of time, and then the devs will do something and it will cycle it and it will flick it to another area. Uh, so so that would be great. Uh, Nikita spoke briefly in the cast about animations being added to the game uh, and worked on such as uh, shoulder switching the weapon, new weapon malfunctions, the PMC being knocked unconscious uh, and the, p the potential to add into squad player possibly the, the, the ability to administer uh, medication um, and maybe use uh, defibrillators on other players. I think I think that would be super cool uh, because I certainly, when I go into a raid and I'm playing in uh, a group. Oh, bro, no! I thought maybe we could sleep, sneak out, maybe get a headshot or something. Alright, we go back again. My bad. God, nobody uses anything but mutants, do they? Take in, you know, a hell of a lot of and, and food right, and next stuff one. like that, and kind of run that supportive um, medic role, you know, based on me not being. You know, the, having the best reactions of oh, being able to spot, uh, players from you know from, from a mile away and stuff like that. 
So I, I particularly enjoy that. And if that is brought in, Bode is just like, kind of like, I'm all okay, guys. Dynamics and squad diversity and build diversity, then yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. It'll be really, really good. Uh, daily missions weekly and monthly are potentially being added. It was uncertain if this would be live for 12.12, uh, but on Twitter recently, the community managers, who I must say, in my opinion, are doing an excellent job and are very responsive and have been communicating especially in the last year oh yeah there is literally no other game which talks to this uh, like girls deserve a um player base as much as uh, uh, transparency the communication oh, oh, floor, and the positivity Just... within the uh in the community and um, i would certainly think that a lot of you will, will definitely agree with that uh, they've been reaching out for ideas on the daily missions weekly and monthlies uh, and they've said so you know get them in get in the discord there's a part in there in the official discord where you can submit them uh, and you know that's that's great to be getting that feedback from the from the community. Streets footage that we've seen um, is from the first area that we get when it's ready. There was nothing else uh, said on that. Lighthouse, however, will not have a boss on release, but it will have an NPC trader um, for players to visit and to interact with. Uh, it's expected uh, that the map right, cool, yeah. half the size of Shoreline, with, a bit. possibly around about ten to twelve players max. So thinking about it, half the size kind of, of shoreline. Terms, half the Interesting. Size. Um, for me, is that going to be like woods? Oh like my god! Without the expansion or customs, yeah, I'm just going to sell these now because the 260 is like towards the top of what they're worth. Yeah, look at that. They certainly felt like it. Uh, reserve without the bunkers when it was just the just the top half. That that wasn't. It's not a particularly large map, is it? I mean, you can traverse it quite quickly. So yeah, he's actually not wrong, yeah. Sizes. We'll wait and see. I'm looking forward to it anyway. We'll wait and see. Um, scav karma changes are probable um, where other player scavs are killing other player scavs. Uh, there's, there was, it was kind of hinted that there may be an enormous penalty to karma. Um, you know, so maybe he's something on the scale of killing a scav boss or maybe he's worse to try and tone down that scav on scav violence. Uh, and maybe he's, maybe he's getting positive karma will be made hard. Um, I felt it was it was good. It, it was a good flow. It was quite natural. Uh, and then I felt the event that happened on the Scav Karma kind of made it way too easy for people to get it. And then when oh man, it, yeah, this is this is ages ago. This is like pre like the other damage. like the the old way. Jesus Christ! Friendly and helping people. I only just realised. My bad, guys. And, and having good interactions with completely random people, just using um, the in-game hand commands uh, and voice commands. Did where you were just getting one shotted straight away uh you know because people maybe had the car and they just didn't care anymore high tier ammo has been removed from the traders progressively it was said uh in the hope that it'll tone down metal game players now this is quite a quite a quite a popular one with the community and a lot of people have a lot of different views on it uh, i think until it's kind we of might need to move the the as well where you can on. craft it um i don't think it'll change that much you can still craft some pretty meaty stuff um in the in the hideout so i think until until that's kind of addressed as well it's it, it's all good and well it being took off the traders but i think also it needs to come out of the hideout uh to kind of to fully restrict it and to fully tone down the meta game players um maybe this will increase the mid kind of the mid wipe you know those levels kind of 20 to 40 maybe it'll increase that and we'll be seeing a lot more um you know build diversity and a lot more is, is is the community class lower tier stuff you know used in raids but if that's the case then we'll have longer gunfights the time to kill will be slightly longer it'll not be as quick um and, and that's what everybody loves everybody loves that early wipe feeling so if that gets if that gets progressed and made longer then great i think i think that's a positive thing i tell you more scav karma lighthouse streets daily missions animations loot hotspots the bug on black limbs 12 12 coming soon dlss and i think we've covered everything yes Bodhi. he's still here a tip people are complaining about loot aren't they and i get it i get that you know a lot of people are paying you know a lot of money in game in pixels to uh to get into labs uh and run that and some of the labs mains they'll be you know a, a little bit upset that they feel that it's not as profitable as it was before some of the some of the the maps have got some fantastic loot on them at the moment and the maps do feel a little bit quieter my tip is go to woods look in the jager style stashes 
and look right, uh... at broken wooden boxes that are scattered around the map. The type of one that is um, on Road to Customs. Uh, battle buddy. By the Road to Customs spawn where that trailer is. And you've, you've got to get an item out of there for one of the quests. Those kind of boxes that are on the ground that are half smashed. Have a look in them and see what you find. No, I'll let you into a secret because you're here and you've probably stayed at the end. I've found uh, mutants, lead X's, D fibs, ophthalmoscopes. I found good stuff in them, and that's just on woods. Have a look around and see what you can find. BT, um, flipping hell, this is good. Start, um, you can check this out on Spotify. These, um, these are going to be produced fortnightly going forwards. I was trying to do it weekly, but I think there's not that much happens in a week for for me to be to be trying to do a weekly podcast on, on what's happening. So I think fortnightly going forwards is a more realistic uh, approach for myself. Uh, and that's it. That's it. Get in touch. Drop me a DM if you want to come on. I'd love to speak to you. I'd love to meet you. Uh, but until, until, until the next time, look after yourself and take care. See you later. Bye-bye. I'm so excited for some of the people that he's got on next. I think the next one's the friendly guy, which is awesome. Uh, by the way, this is just uh, a guy of... Um... Tell me what I know in the community you is pretty into, cool. Into streaming, into broadcasting. What was it? What was the moment that made you think, I want to do that? So, <laughs> we're going to start way, way, way back here. Yeah, like, go for it. We're talking like 17 years old, way back. Maybe, maybe even younger than that, 16, I think. And, well, you um, must only be 21 now, are you? <laughs> I'm 31. <laughs> 31, 31, you know. And um, I might look baby face, but, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we're. I love that. The, uh, the I've always been a massive gamer. Like, um, I've grown up with it with. Uh, with my dad and stuff when I was younger, yeah. like PlayStation 1, etc. And um, I remember particularly uh, a game, I don't know, like through my school years and stuff, I was I was always in school, like um, doing really well as I was like, you know, top of the class type of person. Yeah. Um, but I had some injuries and stuff. I had like, it might sound stupid, I had an ingoing toenail towards the end of like my school oh, life. That's horrific. Mm -hmm. yeah. It caused me loads of issues where like, I couldn't walk, I didn't do my GCSEs. Um, That's and I tough, didn't do dude. any of that stuff and I ended up being like basically not, not bedridden but like stuck in the house for a long time yeah and it was it kind of a case I just got stuck into playing more and more and more and more games to the point where I was I was really really good it's a distraction um, yeah I'm just because I had nothing else to do like, I couldn't go to school yeah you know you, you don't have like a you don't have your own money at that point you can't you can't go out to the, the pub when you when you're that young you know what I mean and when you're always I was still living with my mum at the point at this time, so you know you're off sick, off school. You you you, you know you're going out anywhere. You're no. staying in. You yeah, know, yeah, so. yeah. Strict rules. <laughs> yeah, basically. So I started playing. Uh, I, I remember the first game that I got um, insanely good at was um, Project Off and Racing Three on the Xbox 360. Yeah. Um, and I I think I got to like the top on that on the PGI. It was one of the first ones where you could compete and set lap times like uh, in Europe, and then those top times would then compete against each other and and, and stuff like that. And uh, long story short, I got picked up by a, a quite a big clan, um, a big team at the time called the uh, VVV. Okay. Uh, Vendi Vidivici, like they were one of the massive, massive teams. Like they, oh, mad. Know, yeah, he's not wrong. Yeah, they are huge. All, all that jazz. And uh, anyway, I joined the PGR team as one of the, the PGR races. They wanted to branch out into shooting games. Mm -hmm. So I branched out, and I my, my all-time top favorite game, still to this day, still does not change, still my number one game, is Gears of War 1. Really? The, the original one? The original one, straight up Gears of War one. The ultimate edition, the remaster with the HD and stuff was yeah. um, was awesome. Um, it, you know, it's just the same game but looks better. So both of those are my, my top favorite game. Mm -hmm. They wanted to branch out and to do a to do a to branch out and do some shooting. Obviously, it was a a racing based team. Right. So they wanted to branch out and I'm like, you know what? I'm 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 good at that. Like.